Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome to the Learn How to Log series. Uh, today we are going to be going over all of the steps that are required to get your logging operation started. So this video is after you have set up the uh, controls and have all the mods already installed. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you can go back to the other videos in the playlist and they'll show you how to set your controls for the machines and make sure you have all the mods installed before you get started. So in this video, we're going to start off uh, just on a blank map. So we are currently on the Sitka logging map. Uh, so if you hit escape on your keyboard, you can bring up your, uh, your little menu here. At the very top, there's this little globe shaped earth. If you click on that, it'll bring you to the map. So we're looking at the entire map of the, uh, the area that we're working. So right now, if we zoom in, we can see this little white uh, triangle looking guy, that's us currently at the mill area. So this area right here is our mill. Um, and the rest of the map is basically yours to discover for trees. So you can see the main road that goes out here, it loops and goes all around all over the place, all over the map. So the very first thing you wanna do before you do anything is you want to uh, purchase the map. So you need to buy this entire area. So to do that, all you have to do is hit X or click on farmland and it'll bring up kind of a gray square around the whole map. Now just click into the center of the map and it'll highlight everything. It'll say that the value of the map is very cheap because that's how it is on all of mine. Um, the next thing you want to do is actually buy the map by hitting space bar or clicking this uh, buy button down here. And it'll say, would you like to buy the land for $419? Say yes. So now it turns bright blue, that indicates that you own it. You also see the number one appear in the center of the map. So we now own everything on this map. So this is our territory. And basically by doing that, it just allows you to log any area on the map, which is kind of what we're uh, trying to achieve with the logging side of the game. So after you've purchased the map, like I said, you can kind of have a wander and look around the map and see what areas you might be more interested in logging. So today for the simplicity of this video, we are just going to pick a place that's nice and close to the mill. So as you can see, we're here. Um, we're just going to follow this main road. And as you can see, there's kind of a little cutout here already with a little dirt road that goes around in a loop right here. And that's, uh, that's kind of gonna be our first logging area. But it doesn't matter, you guys can choose wherever you want. If you wanna go to the other side of the map, if you wanna go up a mountain, do whatever you want. Um, we're gonna go right here. That's gonna be our logging area because it's already cut out a little bit, so it'll be a nice starting place. So the very first thing you need to do is hit uh, P as in Peter on your keyboard, which will bring up your purchase menu. Inside here, you'll see this list of tabs for buying stuff. So you want to click on the tractor icon on the left hand side. Then you want to go over to forestry machines, which is this little uh, Ponce looking thing here. So if we double click on that, it'll open up the forestry machine menu. So in here, you'll see all the base equipment for farming simulator. But if you keep scrolling, you'll see the FDR logo appear. Um, FDR logo appears here. So these are all the FDR logging machines that go all the way to the end. So we have a large selection of different types of machines. And as you watch this series, we're going to go over what each machine's purpose is. But uh, for the starting of this video, I want to tell you guys what machines uh, commonly are going to be used. So for the purpose of this tutorial video, I'm going to be teaching you guys the Canadian style of uh, sort of roadside logging, as we call it up here. Um, there are tons of different types of logging and I don't have enough time in this video to go over every single type. So I'm going to show you the type that we do here and then you guys can do um, variations based on however you'd like to do it. But this is just for new people that are starting out and need a place to begin. So for the purposes of the Canadian style, I'm going to show you guys what machines you need to buy to get started. So uh, this section here is our skidders. These are the ones that actually tow the wood from the landing, or, or from the woods to the landing. Uh, these are the attachment machines. So these are all the track machines. Now basically what happens is each of these machines does not have any kind of an attachment on it. They just have an empty space where you can add um, your grapples and all that stuff. So the main two differences between these types of machines are high cabs and low cabs. 
So if we click on this guy, this is considered a high cab because the operator of the machine sits up really high off the ground. As you can see, there's a, a huge distance from the ground and where he sits. This allows you to load trucks really easy and see over top of the bunks of the trucks. So that would be a great machine for loading and uh, maybe processing as well. The other type is low cab machines. So low cab machines are ones that sit a lot lower to the ground. Um, they're not preferably best for loading, but they're great for processing and um, other types of other types of operating as well. Now, we have all of the attachments for these types of machines. So all of these machines here that have an empty space can technically take any attachment um, that we want to put on them. So the different attachments are these. So we have claws and grapples of different sorts. We have a buncher head, which is used for cutting down the trees. Now, when you're using the buncher head, um, it's only going to work on certain machines. So certain machines um, allow for more tilt range than others. So for instance, the Tiger Cat 870 has a specific boom that allows you to tilt up higher to support that type of uh, cutting head. While if you look at a high cab, they don't tilt as far on this piece, so you won't be able to use it on the high cabs. So for a buncher, you would not want to use it on a high cab, but most of the low cabs will support it. Um, we also have grapples, so we have different types of grapples. So we have ones that are considered dangle grapples, which basically swing freely um, when you're waving your head around. And then we have uh, fixed type grapples, like the thumb rake grapple. And those are more solid, um, where you control all the movement, there's no swing. Same goes for processors. Processors, we have the dangle head style processors which have this kind of uh, an arm that kind of swings. And then we also have a fixed head type processor that has a solid base. Uh, we also have a tree grinder and a winch. Uh, we won't be going into winches in this video, um, so we're just gonna leave that aside. Uh, we have the low bed and the logger truck. So the truck itself attaches to the different types of trailers, which we're also going to go on when we get to the loading video. Uh, we also have our bush truck at the end here. The bush truck is fitted with a gas tank on the back of the truck. Um, if you ever want to use this, you just purchase this, drive over to the gas station. You can fill it up and then bring it around to your machines and fill that up as well. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to buy a few machines to get started. So the very first machine that we're going to need is we're going to need a feller buncher. So we're gonna go and I'm gonna buy the Tiger Cat 870 because this is a great machine for, uh, used, for using as a feller buncher. So we're gonna purchase that. So you have the option of either buying or leasing. Um, because I don't have a lot of money in this video, I'm going to just lease the machine. So if you say yes, you want to lease, click yes, okay. Then we wanna go back. Now, because this is going to be the feller buncher machine, we're going to buy the uh, buncher head. Now we have this option of this beautiful ProPrac buncher head and you can choose your colors of however you'd like. So we're gonna do black and then we're gonna accent it with yellow because it's a very nice color. It's actually a very classic ProPack color. So this is the machine that's actually used for cutting down the trees. So this will be the first machine that we send out uh, to the bush before the other ones go. So we're gonna lease that and click yes. So now before we buy any other machines, let's go out and take a look at what we've done here. So once you purchase the machine, it'll appear right here at the mill area, which is ready to load. So we have the buncher head sitting here disconnected from the actual machine. So now we have to actually attach this head to this machine. So let's walk up to the machine and press E to enter it. Once we're inside the machine, you have the option of changing your controls, uh, or sorry, changing your camera angle. So right now we're on the outside of the machine looking, but we'll want to get inside the machine as it's easier to, to, to take a look at. So if we push C, as in Charlie, on your keyboard, it will put you in the driver's seat of the machine. So you can look around the cab and see uh, what you're looking at. Uh, we also want to hit enter on your keyboard, which will start the machine. You'll see this little kind of, uh, icon light up when the machine is on and off so that you know it's active. You'll also hear it start up with its sound effects. So from this view, uh, we want to back up. So you can hit reverse or S on your keyboard. And then you can use your A and D keys on your keyboard to um, steer it around. So we want to drive up so that we're in line 
with this um, head. So we want to be about, about here is fine. So now on this uh, head, all of them have this tilter joint. So this little joint on the end, which can be controlled, allows you to tilt all the way backwards and all the way forwards. So this tilter joint is what controls the tilt of your entire head. So what we want to do is we actually want to line that up with the head itself. So I actually use this view, it's a little bit better. Once we get close enough, you'll see at the bottom where it says FDR Logging Pro Pack Buncher Head, hit Q to attach. So if you hit Q on your keyboard, it will attach that head and it is now part of the machine. And you're able to tilt it and use it as much as you'd like. Okay, so that one's all connected and ready to go. So we can park that, shut the machine off. Uh, the next machine we want to buy is the skitter. So we're going to scroll over to skitters. So for the purpose of the vis this video, we are going to buy the Cat 535 skitter. Um, as you can see, it's uh, there's no attachments or anything you have to do. You can just purchase this uh, straight up. And that will appear right next to our other one. So that one, you don't have to do anything special. It's ready to go right off the bat. Uh, the next machine you want to purchase is the processor. So for a processor, again, you can choose which one works best for you. Um, we're going to choose sort of a medium sized cab. So let's go with, how about the LTEC 317, which is another excellent machine. So this one, again, it's kind of a medium sized cab. Um, but it's perfect size for processing. So we're going to lease that, go back. Now we have to go to the processor section to pick a processor head. So again, it's up to you what you'd prefer. Um, I like the dangle heads, so any of the dangle heads. Let's purchase the Waratah dangle head processor. So we're going to go lease this. And same difference, what will happen is uh, your machine will appear here at the mill and your dangle head kind of falls to the ground a little bit weird here. So Let's hop in the machine. And we're gonna do the exact same thing where we back up and line it up with the uh, head. So let's get nice and straight here. Okay, so again, what we wanna do is the attachment point for that head is right on the end of this. So all you gotta do is just lower this piece until you're right about over it and you'll see Q pop up to attach the processor head. Now in some instances, um, if you get this head over top of the attachment point but you're not seeing an attachment, all you have to do is rotate your, your grapple. So whatever you have set for your rotate your grapple, if you keep pushing that, as I hold it down, you'll see that disappear. So that means that the grapple isn't lined up. So if you just hold down the rotate button, just keep rotating, 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 rotating. Um, eventually, you'll be able to get it back and connected. So if we go out, sometimes the logo appears, sometimes it doesn't. That's kind of a giant, a uh, little bit of a glitch. So as you're holding down the rotate button, if you're still not seeing it pop back up, if you hit Q on your keyboard, just keep tapping Q. Eventually, you'll find the spot where it connects and then you'll see it attach. So for the most part, you don't have to worry about that. It'll it'll connect the first time, but if you're ever having problems with it connecting, um, just hold down the rotate button and tap Q until it actually connects to the machine. Um, the other thing on these machines is, because this is a dangle head, what happens is once it's connected, you lose control of that tilter joint that I was talking about. So on your keyboard, if you hit G, as in Georgia, um, it will give you control of that attacher joint to be able to turn it. Um, and then once you find a nice angle to set it at, so for instance, I would like to set it at about a, a kind of a level angle about there. So once you actually have that set, um, you can hit G as in Georgia again on your keyboard. And what will happen is it'll lock that joint. So now I'm, I'm trying to move it, but it won't move. So that allows your head to stay solid the whole time. Um, and that works for all dangle heads so that you're not um, fighting with that uh, fighting with that head while you're working. So that one is now ready to go. Um, there's nothing special else you gotta do there. Uh, and the last machine we're going to buy is going to be the loader. So the loader. So again, as I said earlier, it's best that you use a high cab machine. So let's get this Hitachi right here. 
Uh, so this is a great high cab machine, great for loading, awesome visibility. So we're going to lease this guy, and then we're going to select a grapple. So the most common grapple that everybody seems to like the most is the thumb rake grapple, which is a very large grapple uh, that can hold lots of wood, and it also has a stabilizer on it for uh, doing long logs. Uh, we're going to go over all the details of what each of these kind of components are for and why in the loading video later on in this series. But for now, let's purchase this one. Okay. So we now have the um, we now have the Hitachi loader. Like I said, it's a very high cab, so you sit really high up. And we have this grapple that's sitting over here. So because it's a little off kilter, let's hop in. And we're actually just going to spin our cab over and grab that grapple. So again, if you reach over, you can actually put your, your head right on top of it. And as you can see, I have nothing popping up for my attach. So if I push Q right now, it's not working. There's nothing attaching because I'm facing the wrong direction. So what you got to do is hold down your grapple rotate button until you see the pop-up appear. Oh, as we saw it right there. And sometimes it disappears. So if you see that pop-up, usually you can just hit Q and it'll attach. So there you go. So now we have the grapple attached. All right. So those are the main fundamental machines that we're going to use for this video um, series. So those are the main ones that you'll need to get started for logging. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to get a truck and a trailer. So why don't we purchase uh, a logging truck? So this is the main logger Mac truck, which connects to the trailers. Uh, we'll just leave it at the base color because that's fine, but you can change the color to whatever you'd like. Um, we need a low bed trailer. So a low bed trailer is used to actually haul the equipment from the mill out to the bush. So we'll need one of those. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is a log trailer. So there's different types of log trailers. We have the logging pole trailer. This is specifically for long logs. So if you do anything that's over 14 meters, um, I would use something like this. Uh, we also have the short log trailers. If you're doing things like five meters, um, we could use stuff like this little guy here. Um, this little pup trailer connects to the back of this trailer. Um, we'll go over that kind of stuff later in loading videos. Uh, we also have the short single bunk trailer, which connects uh, if you're just doing really short logs. Uh, you can also train those together. Uh, we have the two bunk. So you can put logs on either bunk or you can load logs on the whole trailer. We also have the three bunk. So I know this to some people that are brand new, this seems really confusing. There's a lot of different trailer types, but if you're really confused and don't know any better, just stick to these hay rack trailers because it makes it really easy. Um, so if you buy like a three bunk hay rack trailer, it's a really long trailer. You can put long logs on there. You can put short logs on there. You can basically do whatever you want with it. Um, these different types just give you different options later on when you get a little more advanced. Um, sometimes you can combine short logs and long logs on the same trailers. Um, but for the simplicity of this video, I don't want to get too complex. So let's just keep it real simple. Um, we're going to buy this uh, three bunk hay rack trailer. Okay. So lots of different trailers, lots of different options. So um, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to haul the, the uh, machines out to the bush. So Hop into your truck, I'm gonna fire that up. And then we want to back up to this low bed trailer. So we're just gonna sneak around here. And we're gonna back right up to this uh, trailer. There we go. And once we get right underneath, you'll see the connect up here. So hit Q to connect. We now have the trailer hooked up. So now we wanna pull ahead of the machine. So. Let's pull right about here. Now on this trailer, we have these little ramps on the back here. So if you hit X, it'll lower those ramps and that'll allow you to drive machines onto the trailer. Okay, so we're gonna hop out of the machine uh, and now we're going to run over and we're going to grab the feller buncher because this will be the first machine that we wanna take to the bush. So when you're loading, try to keep your head up and off the ground. Wanna keep it about that height. And then you just got to drive your track machine right up to the trailer. As you approach the back of the trailer, it's best to line your tracks up straight with the trailer before you drive on. Because if you're trying to correct it while you're driving on, you can kind of slip off the trailer sometimes. 
So like I said, you want to keep your, your head fairly high so that you're not uh, touching the trailer as you drive on. Your track should be lined up with the, uh, with the ramps on the back. And then we're going to slowly pull ahead, and as you see, it'll just climb right up the back of the trailer. And on there. And you want to bring it till it's about in the middle is a good spot. And then what you do is you can put your head down. You don't have to, but you could put your head down right on the back of the trailer. And just so it's not really pushing, like you don't want it pushing so that your weight's high up in the air. Make it so that your tracks are kind of level. Put it about there. You want to turn your machine off by hitting enter. And then you can hop out. As you can see, the machine is off and parked. Uh, the next thing you want to do is hop back into your truck. And on your keyboard, hit X to raise the ramps on the back side. The other thing you want to do with these machines is they have locking straps which hold the machines in place on the trailer. So if you hit L, as in Lima, <laughs> on your keyboard, it'll have these orange straps that go across the trailer, as you can see them appearing and disappearing. So if you hit L, it locks the straps down. And what that does is it actually locks that machine to the trailer so that it doesn't slide off, similar to how they do in real life um, with uh, ratchet strapping it down to make sure that the uh, machine doesn't slide off or move around on the trailer. So once we have the locking straps engaged, the ramps up, we can fire up our truck and head out to the location. So again, if you're confused on where to go, uh, if you hit nine on your keyboard, and you can hit nine, I think three times, there you go. It'll bring up your map so you can see it in the bottom corner. I usually like to keep it about at number two. So if you hit nine twice, it'll appear that little kind of tiny map in the corner there. So now, as we said on the map, so if I hit escape, you can see the map here again. Um, we wanted to go just to this little site right here. So this is us here, the little arrow. We're just gonna be leaving the mill, going down the road, and then we're gonna stop right at this little site here, which is not far away. Uh, so we'll just drive down here. And then it'll be a nice easy spot. So on my map, I can see it coming up in the bottom left-hand corner that's just down the way here. So let's keep going down. Actually, let's go a little bit further. Let's go just so we have a little bit of distance from us to there. Let's start right about... Uh, let's try... Let's actually go right to this corner. That'll probably be a good spot. Because I kind of wanted to start where we didn't have a spot already made. That'll be good for new people. So let's start. Let's say we want to start our logging block right here. Now, there's some areas on maps that are kind of pre-cut that are set up for you to, um, to, to begin. So you could drive in here, and this kind of area has got a little space here where you could actually start. But what I wanted to do was show you guys right from, right from the base of uh, logging how to start an area. Okay, so let's hop back in this guy. So let's say we wanted to unload our machine about here. Now, when you're going into a new area, you got to remember, you need space to turn around, you need space to um, get your machines unloaded, and space to park them. So if it's a really tight area, it's a little bit harder to work with. In this case, it's actually not going to be too bad, because we do have a lot of area here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit X on our keyboard to drop the ramps. We're going to hit L to unlock those orange locking straps. That'll allow the machine to drive off. So let's go hop in the machine. All right. Hit enter to fire it up. Lift your head up just a little bit and put her in reverse. You can back it straight off the trailer. And I'll kind of dump down here. And then what we're going to do with this guy is we're just going to park it off to the side. Right over here. And we can back it into the bushes a little bit here. All right. Okay, perfect. And we're going to park it right there. Excellent. So that one's good to go. We're ready to uh, use it for for all of our logging purposes. So then we're just going to do the exact same thing. Raise the ramps on the backs by hitting X. And now in this case, I kind of have a weird spot to turn around. So I'm going to try to back into this little hole here. So if you turn your wheel, you can just kind of swing her in there. Use the uh, use the forest to your advantage. Find any kind of openings that you can to uh, get your get your machines clear of the the woods. All right, okay. So we're just going to do uh, an exact repeat. 
I'm going to load up one more machine, machine and take it out, and that'll be the skitter. And then after that, uh, I'm going to let you guys uh, load all of your machines on your own your own uh, games and bring them out there, and then we will pr provide the uh, next steps there. Okay, so same thing again. Some machines are longer than others, so you'll find fitting them on the trailers is a little bit more uh, tricky. And for most part, these machines are exceptionally heavy. So you don't want to haul more than one machine at a time on this trailer. If you really want to try, you can, but I can't guarantee the results will be good. Because driving these machines uh, up hills and stuff with more than one of them on there is really, really difficult for the truck to do because they're very heavy. So same difference with the skidder. Drive it up on the back. And again, see as I'm kind of off kilter, so you can make little adjustments to kind of straighten yourself out a bit. But that's why you want to... Uh, here, we'll just back up and go on straight. That's why you want to make sure that you line up your, your tires uh, straight with the ramps when you're driving on. Because it's really hard to make adjustments once you're actually on the trailer. So I'll do that. And for the skidders, I usually put the uh, I usually put the grapple down just on the back so it don't slap around so much. And same difference again. We hop in, fire it up, hit X to raise the ramps. Again, engage your locking straps. Very very helpful. You hit L, so that'll keep that thing stuck to the thing. If not, sometimes you hit a corner and it'll slide off there if you don't have it on there all the way. And same difference. We're going to bring this one back out to the site as well. Again, when you're hauling uh, different types of machines, as you can see, this one's a lot larger. It takes up a lot of space on the trailer, um, but it does fit just nicely. If you're trying to haul multiple track machines, it is uh, not advised. Please, please keep to one machine at a time on the low beds unless you are looking for a bad time um, because it will happen. So same difference again. We're going to park this guy here. Stop our machine. We're going to unlock the load by hitting L. Hit X to lower the ramps. Make sure your truck is on when you do that. And then we're going to hop in. Fire it up. We're going to raise our grapple up on the back so it's not dragging on the deck. And we're going to slowly back down. You don't have to come screaming off there. The slower, the more stable it'll be. And we're going to back this in and park it right here. All right. Perfect. Okay, so I'm not going to do every single machine. You guys get the concept here. So bring out your loader and your processor. Park them right here as well. Um, that's the end of this video. So in the next video, we're going to be going over the skitter. Uh, and Or sorry, the feller buncher and uh, what it does. And we'll go through the series showing you what each piece of equipment does and how to log. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next video.